Hello and welcome to series of Disaster Recovery. This is Rahim Sheikh and today I'm going to talk about the physical service disaster recovery planning. So we will learn how to plan a DR for your physical service. Let's get started. So when you have physical servers, whether it's a Linux or uh, Unix or Windows, it, it, when you say physical servers, it comes to my big bulky rack mounted servers or whether it's horizontal or, or a vertical servers or workstation or tower. It's a physical servers and you need to do a DR planning for the physical servers. This is one of the traditional recovery process used to happen in past where all the servers used to be physical prior to the VMware virtualization or any other virtualization like Citrix or Zen or uh, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. We used to have a box of servers loaded into the racks and we used to do the installation of operating systems and we used to have a network switch connected with the uplink of, of uh, another core network devices and there we used to have these servers, pile of servers which were connected directly to this switch and this switch was connected to the outside switch or the core switch. And we used to have number of racks for in, in the data centers and servers. And it was very tricky to manage, identify, find them and we used to do the labeling for each and every service. So, Doing the planning for physical servers, it, it was it was a very tough job because you need to make sure when you do the physical servers uh, recovery, so there are a way uh, how the physical servers is booting because you can you, you can plan the active uh, you can plan this recovery based on the current configuration of physical servers. If this physical servers has a local disk and operating systems are installed on this local disk, you need to make sure. At the DR side, you have a similar physical server mounted in the rack, and uh, same brand, same same family uh, physical boxes available, and you will have the backup somehow loaded into the tape library or somehow taken into the uh, replicated to the DR sites. Let's assume it's a semantic, and uh, you're using semantic to to make a daily backup of this physical server. And uh, when you when you ship that backup, or you we can we can we can have another mechanism where, uh, with the help of replicator like a data domain or anything else, uh, data is is get replicated to the vault, and then you build one more uh, semantic backup server which will do the restore of this backup. And uh, very important whenever we do the backup or restore for physical servers, that backup files should be healthy. If backup files are corrupted or they are not good, then you cannot do the restore. And that was a pain for many system guys who were doing the restoration for any of the server for, or a physical server. Second thing, physical servers has a capability or semantic or any other backup tool. Uh, they have a capability to do the BMR restore. If you have a bare metal backup, which is full system state backup of this physical box, and uh, if, if your backup uh, server and the, and the application is compatible doing the BMR backup and restore, it is very easy to restore physical servers. You just need to boot this physical box with the uh, provided ISO image or the, uh, or the DSCP server or, or some uh, bootable servers, the remote boot server, and then it will, uh, the BMR, uh, with the, by using the BMR tool, you can do the restore of the server and that will you don't need to have need to install any operating systems or anything on the on the recovery server it will directly boot the boot the box with the iso image and uh, once you provide the uh, ip address of your semantic net backup server and the credentials it will give you the list of which backup set you wanted to use to restore and then you can restore the operating systems and system files on on your recovery system uh, let's assume you have a chunk of physical servers and all the servers are booting for SAN, booting from SAN. This is 
another condition which you can think about the replication of this SAN device to your DR site. And uh, if the SAN is replicating, what you need to do, you just need to have the WWN of this, uh, this recovery system or the uh, server which is at a DR site. You just do the LUN, boot LUN mapping to this operating system or to, sorry, to this uh, physical server and just power on this physical server and it will boot from this bootable LUN of this device. But you need to make sure you document the LUN detail and the server details in your configuration document because if you don't have that information that this server has this LUN ID 71 for example 71 LUN ID is bootable LUN for the server 1 then only you will be able to map the same LUN ID which is getting replicated here to this operating system or to, so to this server then only you are that the server 1 will come online second uh, Again, once this is a, if this is a uh, replicated storage or the restore from a backup, you will find the same IP addresses. However, there is another technology where you just do the data backup. And uh, when you do the data backup, what you have to do, you have to install the OS on this box first. You have to configure the same name IP address and the application installation and other patching installation on this recovery physical box and then you have to restore the data from your backup server to the freshly built server that time it take too much time depending upon how much data you are going to restore on this box it also have the uh, bottleneck of the uh, server number of servers or restore is happening on through this box also the connectivity from this box to the uh, to the to the server which is connected. If it's a 10 gig or 1 gig connectivity, it can be fast. But if there are multiple restores are happening and and uh, your net backup server is busy, it may take time. So when you do the boot from SAN, the RTO part is very easy. It's very uh, less. It can be one to four hours of RTO. You can you will be able to do the restore for a couple of servers or let's say up to 10 or 100 up to 10 servers, not 100 because you have to do the LUN mapping and all those things. If everything is scripted, it is, it is achievable in one to four hours. Uh, restore, uh, doing a BMR restore, it's depend on the uh, size of backup and the server configuration and the, and the network connectivity. Uh, it may take up to 12 to 24 hours, depending upon size and number of servers. Uh, but when you do the, uh, uh, Server per data restore, so you need to install the operating system, then uh, do the patching, application installation, and the then data restore, so it may take some extra time as well. So this is the third number for when, when you do that. So I would recommend if you have physical servers with boot phone LAM, I would recommend to do the storage level application and have the similar operating systems, or sorry, similar family servers available at DR side. Many time I have seen the issues where your production servers are from HP family. I'm just giving an example. Let's say it's HP DL360 servers. And at DR side, you have a same family or a different family, let's say uh, IBM or Dell, or sometimes it's HP, but another uh, rack or tower server. And the array drivers are different for that server. And when you, when you do the BMR restore or the system state restore, uh, and after the restore, when, when you restart the server, to take the actions updated, uh, server doesn't come up. It gives you blue screen. That time you need to do the troubleshooting for fixing the array drivers for, for the storage or sometimes fixing the uh, hidden drivers of the, of, of the systems which were available at productions, but at, they're not available at DR side. So you have to do the troubleshooting for that. Uh, there is another option uh, which can be done as a P2E restore, okay? So let me rub this configuration or diagram. So let's assume this is a production servers and physical servers mounted in the racks. And uh, so there are tools available in market. Uh, there are many systems who do the P2E, P2E replication. 
and that's ongoing replication. We can do that and uh, have this replicated to somewhere in, in a DR site SAN, which is a DR site. And uh, what it does, it, it basically creates the VMDKs and, uh, or a virtual machine in other way. Uh, it creates a virtual machine of your physical servers. Okay, so there are tools called image, uh, data, uh, double, double deck, and so on and so forth. They will, you'll, if you just need to do a research and you'll find a software which, which do this replication from physical to virtual. And uh, at the time of test, they, they just map this VMDK to virtual machine as per the configuration of the physical servers. Or uh, it has the, uh, so double deck has a feature where you have to create a virtual machine in uh, prior to the uh, prior to do the replication so that everything will be available at the time of dr you just need to power on that virtual machine it will cut the replication and it will you will be able to use this system yes there are some issues comes up as it's v 2 v and and block level changes sometimes uh, you may say get some problems but this is one more way to do the recovery uh, there is Another way where I have seen some backup software, they, they do the physical backup and it gets restored on virtual machines. And I also seen this workable solution where uh, there were the physical servers of HP and, and it was restored on the, on the virtual machines. Uh, I, I don't have the name of the um, servers, but you will have to do some more digging in the in the which which are the applications they or which are the uh, solutions they provide this kind of a P2V solution or P2V scenario. Uh, I have personally tried myself uh, servers with the physical servers they were putting from the LAN uh, or SAN at the production, um, and uh, what we did we had a replicated SAN at DR site, and uh, we we tried mounting this this VMDK to the virtual machine as a raw device mapping. And uh, with that raw device mapping, what happened, we, we were able to directly point this boot lens to the virtual machine and we were able to do the recovery. Yes, we had to run the uh, tool after this mapping. It was a VMware converter. And uh, you don't need to convert, it's just another option called reconfig. When you do the reconfiguration of this box, actually, or a virtual machine after mapping the RDM, it's, it goes into the registry and makes some edit into the operating system's registry file and uh, it make it a bootable uh, system or, or though it was a physical server but it was it can be it can be brought down as a virtual machine uh, and after that you have to do some uh, uh, uninstallation of the hidden devices like uh, uh, hidden NIC cards and hidden RAID controllers uh, which, which, which are not available at DR site and then your system start functioning well. We have done the cluster recovery for that uh, and it works well. So these are the way to do the recovery of physical servers. Uh, you may find out some more, some less. There will be a challenges. Uh, good thing is now there are very limited servers, physical servers are available at production I've seen and uh, the, they still use the traditional way of recovery like a, uh, taking a full backup and, and uh, replicating that to the DR site or booting from the LAN which is, which is their production replicate that LAN to the DR site because the replication of the SAN is, is much more easy and best way rather taking backup and uh, repli uh, replicating the backup image because you have less RPO here. When you do this stand level replication you can achieve up to 30 up to 1 minutes of RPO if it's if it's a good SAN or if you're using Snap Mirror or, or any other technology, it can go up to uh, one to four hours or, or depend upon whatever application technology you're using. But with the, with the backup, it can go, it can start minimum one day backup or one day backup or, or sometimes if that backup is not good, you may end up with the going on different day backup restore. So if you wanted to achieve better RPO, I would recommend it to use the SAN based application rather taking a backup and shipping that backup or replicating that backup. Uh, so what we learned today, so we learned so many things about the physical service recovery or P2B recovery. Uh, I hope this session was informative for you. Uh, I would like to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe my channel. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.